I don't know, like I wanted to be on the edge of my seat, but I wasn't. I wanted to care a lot, but I didn't. Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's Ashley and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down Quicksilver. I really wanted to make a video where I talk about my completely unfiltered feelings and opinions on Quicksilver because it is getting a lot of hype right now on BookTok, on Bookstagram, on BookTube. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's saying it's the next big fantasy romance of the year. And that's what motivated me to pick it up. I know there's a lot of people like Raven Haired Reader here on BookTube who read it and really loved it. It just didn't work for me. It just didn't work for me. It wasn't bad. I think there is an audience for this book, not me, but other people who will really enjoy this book. There are people who perhaps are newly getting into fantasy romance, or if you're one of those people that care less about the plot and the world building and more just about the romance and the smut, you know who you are. I see you. You will love this book. Those are the people, and I'm not saying that the only people who love this book are those people. I'm saying you have a great chance to love this book. If you like the writing of Jennifer L. Armentrout, you're going to love this book. I want to start off by doing this in somewhat of a, a way where we start to talk about the start of the book, we talk about the settings, we talk about the character development, we talk about the side characters, the main romance plot line, and then the ending. So the start of the book and the premise is a little bit muddled. It's not super clear, but basically we have, and, and I think this is where the book starts to kind of break down for me is it's a very uncreative starting, though it was strong. So for being set in a dystopian world where you have the, you know, plucky taking care of her brother in the poorest district, who is that? What book does that sound like? Right? Hunger Games, Katniss and her sister Prim. So you have this plucky heroine. She is different because she is a fighter. Her mom was a rebel and hid rebels in their place and she learned how to fight from them because these rebels would be stuck there up in the attic just doing nothing. So they taught her daughter how to fight. The world seemed kind of cool. I was getting into it. It has two sons. It's very hot. And in the poor districts, this poor district in particular, it's the poorest and they're basically walled off and given a very small water ration in order to survive the main character has to steal and also uh, learn how to siphon off water. The other interesting thing is she seems to have some kind of affinity for metal. There's this secret kind of power that she is hiding. Her mother is now passed away, so she's looking after her brother and her mother's ex-flame is a blacksmith, so he can craft a lot of different items and he takes her under his wing. We learn later on some other cool details about this world. There's this fighting pit where you can go to try to fight for extra water rations if you need to, and we know the main character has been in there. We also learn that the main character has been sterilized because if you're in the poorest areas, they mark like every couple of babies born get marked for sterilization. And that is an interesting thing that they could have gone into a bit more. You also learn that the mother was a prostitute shortly after the father died she worked in the house of Kala and that is how I think she ended up being killed because she eventually didn't want to service any of the soldiers and it was like a couple soldiers who caught her carrying something contraband and it was very graphic the way they describe the death of the mother like she's killed and then they try to pee on her and then someone tries to rip off her clothes unfortunately and for Fortunately, Elroy gets there at that point and he's able to basically punch that guy in the face. Well deserved, I think we can all agree. I really liked this world. It actually pulled me in. I guess I'm still a sucker for a good dystopian world and I liked 
because we don't often get that like scorching heat and then this element of the water rations. And I was intrigued by the way she could make metal vibrate, but very quickly we're taken away from that world. She's whisked into the magical uh, land of the Fae because she's able to activate you feel like it's kind of like a Merlin moment where she is able to hold this sword and then this Quicksilver goes into this uh, soldier and she gets like you see she calls him death and really it's our main character Kingfisher he comes and she's whipped away and I'm I was kind of like oh but I'm sort of enjoying and into that world we had like a bar scene with Carrion I think Carrion kind of was one of the more successful plot characters in there or characters in the book what is a plot character? I don't know why I'm saying that. He was one of the more successful elements of the book. He's got that like swagger. He likes to sleep around. He's given the character a good time before. He kind of has uh, sort of the healings for her, but he's just sort of like a guy who likes to have fun with a lot of different people, hit on a lot of different people. I liked him because he made me laugh and he said some kind of ridiculous things. He was comic relief and he was well done. Now our main character, she's in this world and just, she very quickly starts to have like a feeling of sexual attraction to this guy who basically took her away from everything she knows, was supposed to go get her brother, didn't, tricked her into an oath that basically allows him to completely control her, but he's hot and a prince and so we're okay with that. Their relationship was very insta-lovey. I get that the author was trying to do enemies to lovers, I hate you but I love you kind of thing. The character is very recent Zayden coded. He is a shadow daddy. If you want to see more books with shadow daddy recommendations, by the way, I'll link up above a video I just did that has books all with shadow daddies. So he's he's not an original character she's not an original character carrie and i hadn't seen before i liked the first setting the second setting was a bit underdeveloped i didn't really get some of the things that's kind of like the plot is very loose okay very loose he uh kingfisher and his people are completely unsupported by their actual king and they are warded in this warded area that doesn't allow the actual king to come in. And he is fighting across this river, these vampires, but they're also zombies. They're zombie-pires, zombiers, vampires. What is a vampire zombie? Someone comment down below and tell me if you are a zombie vampire, what does that make you? But they're like the basically the foot soldiers can only be killed with silver, right? So, uh, okay. The one element that I did really love was this element of they have to break the ice in order to on the river to prevent the horde, the zombie vampire horde, from crossing. That was kind of cool. Uh, I just I, I was it was not clear to me. He seems to be so powerful, and yet. Just, he's, why doesn't, you know, I don't know. They were losing the battle and also mysteriously he destroyed a city, which you later find out was just him making a bet to try to save the city. Uh, it was a bit confusing, a bit underdeveloped. All of a sudden I felt like she is into him. And then later on, I think we're supposed to forgive the fact that it was very insta-lovey because he is her faded mate, the cover. We've got like this emo guy and he's there's like these butterflies that are like fluorescent. And I get what the butterflies are a reference to his little nickname for her. So we got these butterflies that are fluorescent and then he has an emo tear and I'm like, is he allergic to the butterflies? Does the dude need some reactant? It's hard, it's hard to be a fantasy romance character and it's hard to do a good cover. Would have liked more Quicksilver. It's kind of cool how the Quicksilver is sentient. It doesn't make sense to me. The Quicksilver is also the voices of people who died. Can someone explain how were the people who died in that 
uh, city somehow speaking through the Quicksilver and they want to be released to where? I guess the afterlife? I, I don't know. Very vague. And then, like, if you put that sword into the Quicksilver, it stops it from being a portal. But it also, you need these relics. Otherwise, you go insane when you travel through it. I don't know. It's it's very fuzzy. It's very fuzzy for me. The spice was good. I was into it. I was into the spice. Uh, it was kind of cool that, you know, they add this extra layer where he's a vampire and so, or he used to be a vampire. That's the other thing. They're fae, but they used to be vampires, but that was a blood curse and it's been cured. But if they bite you because they still have fangs just as like a legacy of this blood curse, if they bite you during sex, then you'll ecstasy and they feel ecstasy, but they also get very tempted to drain you, which like, oh, is he gonna like want to drain her? No, he's just, that that wasn't even an issue. The, his close circle are kind of like the inner circle in Akatar, another uncreative element, but I did like Lorith. I did like Ren, although I was not quite clear why Ren was so nice to the female main character from the beginning. Did she get back to her brother? Will he be okay? Yeah, nobody cared about him sort of towards the end. You have this triumvirate, triumvirate of evil characters and they established during this like final battle scene, which really reminded me of book one of Akatar, by the way, just like with the maze. Basically, the author was like, oh, Akatar is popular. I can write something like that. I can write something like that. And it, there wasn't enough elements of it that were different. And I think that was a problem. The plot was convoluted because it's Carrion. He's the son of the first ever vampires. And he's able to defeat. First, they say, oh, you can't kill one of the, any of the one of the three. You have to kill all of them. If you just kill one of them, they come back because they're connected somehow. But then later on, Carrion is able to kill one of the three and the other two flee. Uh, very fuzzy for me, very fuzzy. Didn't make sense, didn't make sense. And now our main character had to turn into a vampire, but she's not a vampire because the god of chaos and his daughters like her and, and him and wanted to save her. I like, was a bit confused. I think that it, it was almost trying to do too much and of because of that it didn't have time to flesh out all these different elements that it was trying to do i think that the book is very readable it's a really accessible fantasy so it's really going to be good for beginners it's really going to be good for people who you can just turn your brain off it's it's a bit lighthearted. like the stakes never felt that Hi. Who, you know, who are we worried about here? And I feel like the tone was off pretty much the whole book, except for the beginning. The beginning, I feel that oppression. Okay, I felt it. I felt the heat of those suns beating down. I felt the sadness of losing the main character's mother. But then when we get to Kingfisher and we start to get some of those other plot elements of like, are they vampires and what does the main vampire want? And it, it lost it, the tone, it became silly. It didn't take itself seriously even. And I think that's okay. It's just not what I wanted. It is going to give you like a purely entertaining, tropey, lots of tropes in there, okay? Found family, a faded mates, only one bed, uh, lots of tropes in there that you can enjoy. Enemies to lovers. Me, it was a little bit of an Akatar too close to Akatar, but not good enough to even be in the caliber of Akatar. You read Sarah J. Mass's books, and there's an actual plot going on outside of the romance. It's well developed, there's lore, there's depth to the world, and you begin to care about the characters. You understand the characters. You know, there's a reason that Feyre and Reason didn't get together in book one, okay? It took them a book and a bit, book and three quarters, to really get together. This book, our main characters are uh, enjoying each other's physical company quite soon in the book. And you're not really sure why. I mean, there's some cute world building elements. Like I like the sprite characters who had to like give Carrie in a bath with this moss. 
I like Dobby house elf esque character Archer. I almost wish I needed more. I needed more development. I needed to understand the world more. And that was just missing for me. Character development, okay. Plot, not good. Setting, uh, not fleshed out. Was it entertaining at times? Yes. Was it spicy? Yes. Although I could have even used more spice, personally. The twists at the end, no. It, they, those were not for me. I don't know, like I wanted to be on the edge of my seat, but I wasn't. I wanted to care a lot, but I didn't. I don't know. And then you have this like, the gods, that was kind of like a deus ex machina. You know what I'm saying. But overall, I'm gonna say this is like more of a three star for me and like a leaning towards 2.5 three star i think if you want an easy read if you want something that you don't care about the world development or the plot development and the world building then this is for you it's not going to be original i'm getting to the point now where i don't want to read enemies to lovers because it's too derivative it's too much of a same story dressed up a little bit differently i don't want to read the same book over and over again if i wanted to read the same story i would just reread akatar right i think that that is why fourth wing was so successful because it was a bit of a different story. The focus is actually on Bathgate. It's on the War College. It's on Violet coming into her own. Zayden and Violet, it's not the main focus of the whole book. There's the dragons, which is a bit different, and they had a lot of interesting aspects to them. Very funny, great lore, competition. I'm not really vibing with this book overall. I would love to know in the comments, what did you think, A, of the cover? because the cover did not work for me. What did you think B of the book? What is your next read? Tell me all these things down below. If you could take a moment to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. Leave me a butterfly emoji to let me know that you got to the end of the video because Quicksilver and butterflies, right? I will see you in my next video. This is Ashley saying goodbye, good night, good morning, whatever the time is for you. Happy reading, take care.